hey, John, I know when you try to get your playing rotation down to a, a number, is it more important what a guy does in practice to get into that rotation or more important what they actually do during games to show you the production when it counts the most? It's both. It's both. Um, there are some guys when you put them on the stage, they'll blossom that you're not sure about them because in practice, but they get on the stage and they do it. Uh, there are other guys that earned the right to get on that stage with how they practiced. Um, but at the end of the day, merit wins out. I mean, Jacob is jumping into the rotation because of his energy, not how we play, the energy, the toughness, the attack in the base plan. Um, now he only practiced seven days. So it's all merit based. Thanks. Sherry, we'll go to you and then John Hale. And speaking of the, of the stage, uh, how big is the stage tomorrow night? How does that impact preparation? Uh, of the conclusions or at least thoughts that uh, you would have playing that stage? Well, we're, we're, we approach every game the same. We're, you know, like you saw the last team made 11 out of 15 threes against us. And so every team we play, it's the biggest game on their schedule. So this will be, you know, you can't make it any different. This will be the stage, um, the, you know, all the stuff we're, we're, we're saying, look, our thing is focusing on us. We're going to play how we play. They're going to play how they play. And either they're more advanced than us or we're a little more advanced than we think we are. But we'll find out. It's a great – this is the games you learn about your team. This is it. And, and we have – before our league, we have five games or six like this that we'll learn about what we are. So, um, yeah, it, it's going to be a hard game for us. They're really, really good. They're deep. They're big. Seven foot, six, six ten, six, eleven. They're big. So, you know, it'll be a it'll be a challenge. And speaking of big, how is Oscar? And is he? Yeah, you know, I know you said you rested him a little bit in the Miles game. He's okay. He's still, you know, he's he's a little bit nicked up. Um, but, you know, again, uh, this is one of those that, you know, let's go. And, and uh, but he's, uh, he gives us a physical presence. Um, you know, we just got to, again, trying to figure out not only how, how you're doing, who, what, what is the rotation now for this kind of game? You're not playing 11 guys. It's not happening. Now, you might because of foul trouble, injuries, different things like that, but your rotation is going to be no, more nor, uh, normal with eight guys, maybe seven. Who are they? And then the other side of it becomes next man up. Are you ready for your opportunity to prove you should be playing more? We're doing stats right now on points against a player in over as, as though he played 40 minutes. How many points would you give up if you played 40 minutes? And so now they're really seeing it. We're talking about it. We're zeroed in on it. Um, so all those things play into this. Um, we're going to have to help inside because, of, you know, they're big. They also shoot threes. Well, we've got to help inside and take away threes. Not an easy task. John Hill, you got next, and then Nick Lorenzen. Cal, obviously you all recruited Paolo Banchero quite a bit. What kind of challenge is he for that post defense that you've talked so much about the last couple of weeks to start off here? Well, the biggest thing is he's he's got size and girth. He's 250 pounds. So our four men are not that big, but they're quick and active, and he's got to guard them too now. But he's a skilled passer, scorer. He's a terrific player, great kid from a great family. Um, he will be a challenge, uh, but he's going to be a challenge for everybody all year. Nick, go ahead. Hey, Coach, how are you doing today? Good. So I know you have Duke this Friday or today, but 
or tomorrow, but you have uh, Robert Morris on Friday. This will be the first time since the regular season after that you'll play them after that NIT game. Just reflect upon that game and speak about what Moon Township in the Pittsburgh area means to you. Well, um, when we went in to play them, um, you know, I'd spent a lot of time on that campus. I tell the story, my grandmother and my aunt, great aunt, worked in the cafeteria. I used to sneak food out the back door from them, um, work out down there, have lunch, then work out some more. So I go back to the Gus Crop days. So, uh, um, you know, uh, it's, it's a special place. What they've done to the campus, their facilities, off the charts. Um, you know, it's, it's not the same school as when I grew up in that area. And, and coach, they've done a good job. I mean, they're, they struggled last year, but so did we. They're way better this year. And it's a dangerous game, especially coming off of this, having to give the kids Wednesday off probably not getting back until three, four in the morning, having one practice day and then playing them. Going to be a hard game for us. That, that game is going to be hard. Dick Gabriel, go ahead. John, you coached in a lot of big games like this, and you've seen some players do some remarkable things. Why do guys like John Wall and Maxie and those guys – just take to moments like this and perform the way they do. Some shy away, but some really embrace it. That's what you'll learn from this. You know, you, you think this guy, that guy, that guy, you don't know until the game's over and you look and say, he loved that moment. And the biggest part of it is guys like that aren't afraid to look bad. They don't care. They're going to go play. They're not afraid to miss a shot or a tough shot or a game winning shot. It's not going to uh, change how they see it. And they want that play. They want to be in there mainly because they're not afraid to miss it. And the same defensively, they dig in there. It's not exchanging baskets and what I look like I'm, I'm playing to make myself look better than this other guy. So I've had a bunch of those guys and, uh, been fortunate to coach in a lot of these kind of games and you just don't know until the game's over. Like I told these guys, this is our next game. It's not a big game unless we win, then it's huge. And I said, how about this one? You're not going to know if you win or you lose until you win or lose. So go play. Let's be at our best. They'll be at their best and let's see who's a little bit behind. Because at the end of the day, I think both teams will be fine. Um, but we're both going to learn about each other. Go to Dave Baker and then Keith Taylor. Dave, unmute yourself there. There you go. Sorry, I'm unmuted. Cal, two, two part question, real quick, especially since you've been in Kentucky. You, you know, people talk every year nationally about you and Coach K, about Kentucky and Duke. You, your thoughts on what could be your last matchup? with him and a big game like this early in the year is there a tendency to like skew expectations if you win a lot of people think you're better than maybe you are and if you don't win then they then they think the season's over that could happen but this is basketball this isn't football so uh i think they've they've watched my teams over the years and we get better as the year goes on and we mm -hmm. give ourselves a chance so uh that being said the, the stuff about coach k look He's made me a better coach. He's kept me sharper. Um, you know, we, we did things those first five or six years that, you know, Duke started taking the same kind of guys. I mean, and it became that competition back and forth. But I've never lost respect for what he's been able to do over 40 years. Do you know how many times you have to change the way you coach and what you do? doesn't mean the principles, the pillars of your program change, but how you defend, how you play offensively, how you teach, what's more important, how, and to do it over 40 years, incredible, incredible. At one place, incredible. Coach Rupp, you say the same thing. How do you do it that long in one place and still have a level of excellence that you have? And I'll tell you what, he's been great for all coaches been great for all coaches and and I like the the competition of going 
coaching against the absolute best. You go and whether I was young coaching against Coach Smith, that you have an opportunity um, coaching against Hall of Fame coaches. I mean, that's, you know, you want to see where you are in preparing your team. What he's, what's he doing right now that's different? But it's, uh, now I'm hoping this isn't the last time we play him. So don't make any mistake about that. I hope we play him <laughs> one and one more. Hey, Taylor, we'll go to you in the back to uh, Larry Bob. Hey, Coach, you mentioned on Friday that CJ was going to practice over the weekend. Number one, did that happen? And how is he progressing? He practiced um, uh, Saturday a little bit, and he practiced Sunday a little bit. He's practicing today a little bit. My guess is I may throw him in for a minute or two, let him just run up and down. But th it, this probably isn't that game. Um, so, but, you know, it's just good to have him back on the court competing. Larry, go ahead. John, when you talk about this won't be a game to play 11 guys. So does that mean in your mind, you already know now what guys you're going to play? Or is that just something you just kind of do, but feel once the game starts and you see what's happening? Well, I may put guys in that I think are part of a group of seven or eight. And then you watch and you say, let me try somebody else. And then that guy becomes that group of seven or eight. I mean, again, I go back to Jacob. I didn't think Jacob would jump in this and do this, but his energy level and the spirit he brought to the court changed how we were playing. Now, just think if I can get five guys playing like him. Ooh, that's really hard. I'm, I'd rather shoot balls and make a couple plays and throw an assist and do a look away pass. And No, we need five dogs to play like him. Now, we get five guys playing like that, all of a sudden we're really good because he is 6'9". You know, he is 6'9", and act, active and athletic. And, you know, he's... Uh, He's, he's making us different. So, John, does that mean that every game you're seven or eight might change all season? I hope not. I hope not. That means we've got inconsistent players. Okay. John, Hale, and then back to Jerry, and then uh, time for a few more. Now, fans have to be vaccinated to be at this game tomorrow. My understanding is players don't. Just what is your team vaccination rate going into the season and how concerned are you still about, you know, things that might pop up with absences and stuff this year? Um, all of our guys and staff are vaccinated. You know, last year, not one of our players or staff um, contracted the virus. Not one. Now, we never <laughs> were able to come together as a team because we made sure we were away from each other, but none of them uh, contracted. And right now we're all, um, the, most of the staff has gotten their boosters. Um, you know, we're, uh, the school has been so diligent. I, I got to give it to Dr. Capilouto. I mean, when you talk about the rates on our campus, I mean, it, it's like near 90% vaccination. I'm talking staff and students and, you know, you don't have hospitalizations. I mean, it, it, what we've been able to do to survive this on our campus um, is incredible. And I, my hope is that, you know, with the shots and boosters and what we're doing, that we'll be able to avoid any of that. But you don't know. You just don't know. Jerry, go ahead. And then uh, Adam Zagora. Yeah, John, I was thinking about what uh, Xavier said about uh, after the first exhibition, concentrating on the interior defense, and then Miles hits a bunch of threes. Uh, I'm wondering, after Miles, what's the focus of the defense? Well, we want to stop them in the post and don't give them threes. <laughs> Pitch a shutout. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what, uh, what, how was the Knicks game last night? I only stayed a half, so I wasn't the mush. It was not me. I stayed one half and left. They were in great shape when I left the gym, left the arena. And, uh, no, it was great. Derek Rose and uh, Julius and seeing the guys. Nerlens didn't come out right away, so I didn't get to see him. So 
Kevin and, you know, Saul, um, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, I think is, and Derek, both are going to come to the games. And then, and then you had Leon and, and Wes and Kenny, Kenny looks good. Looks like he lost a little weight. Um, but he, uh, it was great seeing you, you're talking family. So, um, it was great to be able to see everybody. And, uh, I got to sit there with my son, um, you know, watch half the game. And, um, and then I took off. Thanks. More importantly, I got to get with the Cardinal this morning at mass. He gave mass and I met him after blessed my rosaries. I brought him with me just in case I saw him big day for me as a Catholic. Uh, Adam Zagori, looks like you got the last question here. Hey, John, uh, just to follow up on your Knicks uh, game there, you know, a year ago, you said you thought Leon and Wes and those guys were going about this the right way and they weren't going to make any dramatic moves. You know, they started off the year five and one. I think they're six and four now. Just what are your thoughts on how they're kind of building the program, you know, with your guys there and, and the other guys? Well, they got injuries. I mean, you know, uh, that stuff's happening, but um, – they have the flexibility they need to be able to evaluate who they have and the flexibility to do things if they need to. And let me say this, Cleveland is supposed to be, ah, they're not supposed to be real good. Great. They are really talented. Like Mobley is really good. Their guard play is really good. I'm looking like every NBA team is good. And so if you're not ready to go or you have a bad shooting night, you will lose. But they beat Milwaukee. Now you think about that. And what, how about you walk in the arena and Madison Square Garden is like the old days. People going nuts. You know, I even, I hit Spike Lee last night. Where are you? I'm sitting right here. Where are you? So he hit me this morning, but. Uh, Have you seen you know, anything no, from Nerlens or Emmanuel or, or your guys that in their development? Yeah, I, I th well, here's what's happened. Uh, Nerlens is going to be fine. I think he's beat up a little bit, but Emmanuel, he's got to be the next man up now. And it's harder because you're getting a little less minutes than you did a year ago, but it's next man up. You got to, you know, take those minutes that you get and prove I need more because when I watch him, I love his spirit on the court bouncing and all that. And for Derek Rose at his age to do what he's doing, I mean, he, he's bouncy, looks young, best floater in the NBA. Shot a bunch of them last night. New Orleans makes a difference. They're telling me Kevin's gotten better, Kevin Knox. Now he's just got to get on the court and then do it when he's on the court. Hardest thing for a player. You're not getting a whole lot of minutes and you're thrown in there. Right? It is what it is. Let's, you got to go get it done. 